morning, CTM. What's going on, everyone? I hope you're well and doing great as we get started here for our live stream. Today, we're going to be talking about the markets. We're going to be talking about, whoa, what's going on, everyone? Good to see you. Yeah, we're going to be talking about, obviously, the big bang heard across the monetary system, and that is that the Bank of England capitulates. They, they've pivoted as they've been going towards and actually leading the way towards this hiking cycle. They've now, it's been too much. Their bond market is just not able to take it and they have to start quantitative easing. Whether or not this is going to be something that we're going to start seeing, let's say like a domino effect up here at the central bank near you, that's up for question. Uh, Rico Funk said we wanted to see what my take on all of this was. I started out here this morning by just throwing out a couple of feel feelers, right? What I like to do is kind of put out some provoking stuff out there uh, to kind of like push people a little bit to get their opinions, right? Today looks like potentially new era of central bank monetary policy of rate hikes, why running quantitative easing. Eventually, they're going to cut rates. I'm talking about central banks. I don't think that this is, first of all, limited to the Bank of England. Bank of England is the first one to go ahead and to pivot. They're probably not going to be the last. By the way, that they say that this is going to be limited quantitative easing. It's for, for a short time. And, and whether that's true or not, when people throw around terms like QE forever, and you know, I'm not so sure. I think in the years ahead, as we are undergoing monetary reset, we're going to be seeing sharp spikes to the upside sharp psych spikes to the downside. I don't know. Oh, good. I'm not covering anything, right? So, but I, I don't think Bank of England is going to be the first. I, I, excuse me. I think, I don't think they're going to be the last. They're just the first. And, and which the next central bank is, I mean, that's, I, I ask all of you, but eventually instead of just running quantitative eyes, uh, easing, why hiking, they're going to have to first pivot to a pause and then eventually towards rate cuts as the economies continue to deteriorate and they need any help they could get. That's going to be easier monetary policy. And we're going to see inflation explode. The cur currency debasement is to continue in earnest. And by the way, that is our signal of all signals as far as the Bitcoin thesis. DXY, is it going to retrace on the Bank of England pivot and a return to quantitative easing. Some pretty good things over there. Let me jump down over to Jan, first of all. He said, I'm not seeing the, the, the DXY retrace on that pivot. It shouldn't, it shouldn't make shouldn't it make the dollar stronger. Should the return to quantitative easing weaken the British pound? A few thoughts on that. Pound's initial reaction, we'll look at it on a chart in a second, was to jump. Resuming back up now too. Markets could be pricing in. This comes to a central bank near you. For example, the United States of America, and you saw how quickly, or we've seen how quickly right now, a central bank could pivot. Now, I'm not, I have no idea when the Federal Reserve is able to pivot. I don't, I'm, I'm not calling for an immediate pivot. I, I did watch with my wife. My wife was like, who is this guy? I was watching a, a Luke Roman video last night, and it, he doesn't believe that, he, he believes that the last, this past rate hike was the last one. There's a lot of time to November. I, I have no idea, honestly. I don't have an opinion on that. Uh, sometimes the, the sell-off happens on excuses. And today could be a potential excuse for some type of uh, mean reversion. When we look at the DXY, we see that we're also into 14-year resistance. We'll look at that in one second. Besides, the quantitative easing will help put a Band-Aid on the UK credit markets and shore up the economy. Look, just some thoughts. I don't claim, I don't, I don't know. I'm just waking up this morning, finding out what had happened and trying to put the pieces together. And with all of you, which kinds of brings up one thing I wanted to check in with all of you was, you know, whether or not this format is working. I really thoroughly enjoy these live streams. I like the pressure of having to be live and to get in it with all of you. They are lengthy, though, and I know that there's a significant portion of the audience, probably the greater portion, would prefer, you know, like focused 10 to 15 minute uploads, whether or not it was on Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and, and crypto. 
and then other times traditional markets, other times commodities, things like that. I know it's easier to digest. At the same time, like th this is gr this is good for me. And not so much that it's good for my viewership, which which it's not, but that's not my concern. My concern is what brings me the most uh, alpha, let's say. What, what, what helps me uh, analyze the markets the best? What helps me have my pulse on the markets best? Nevertheless, I, I do throw it out there. And if, and if you're watching this on the replay today, uh, please go ahead and take a moment and let me know your feedback is important to me. And maybe we could mix it up. I, I do love the live streams. I, I love the energy. I love being connecting here with all of you. I love the relationships that are developed and I love doing the real time analysis. So throwing that out there for you. Jonathan, Bank of England will only be a speed bump in the DXY's continuing milkshake. I, I thoroughly agree until we have some type of pivot by the Federal Reserve, some type of change in policy. And by the way, if you noticed the White House putting out some press releases last night or coming across the feeds that the, the, you can't trust them, first of all. You can't trust anyone, any, anyone in politics. And and often before some type of big policy uh, uh, adjustment is is taken, it's they're coming out with the other view or, or the, just like letting you, oh, that, that will never happen. Bank of England, we will never return to to quantitative easing. And then the next day they return to quantitative easing. That, that didn't happen, but that's an example. Look at that, buy Bitcoin is trending. Buy Bitcoin because the continued debasement of currencies worldwide is in full effect. I thoroughly agree with that, Jonathan. But which central bank is next to pivot back to quantitative easing? That's the question. All right, let's dig in a little bit. Let me first start off jumping over to the DXY. We're going to start with the DXY and I'm going to say goodbye for a second so I can kind of focus in and let me go ahead and, and get comfortable so we can get into the charts a little bit. Dollar milkshake theory is absolutely worthy. If you go right now and you search in Twitter, Brent Johnson, Santiago Capital AU, the AU stands for gold because at the end of the day, uh, big, big believer in gold being money. And even though right now expectations are as we see the collapse of this current monetary system, that the dollar will basically suck in all other fiat. If you go to his Twitter page, he has a pinned, a pinned, pinned, pinned tweet that has uh, an interview where he did on Real Vision, which he would recommend you you watch if you want to be familiar with the dollar milkshake theory. Uh, you do you do want to be familiar with it, and and in, from my point of view, this was absolutely dollar milkshake theory shortage of dollars playing out over here in March 2020, and it ended. It ended when you saw the Federal Reserve open up direct swap lines to central banks worldwide, making dollars over abundant and then flooding the system. Control P printing $4.1 trillion. And then for the next two years, another $1.4 trillion in QE. Now, uh, whether or not this is dollar milkshake, look at that perfect, beautiful kiss of that 12 year, 14 year trend line. I mean, it could be nothing. You know, it could spike above. Here's a perfect example of it, of it spiking above and not holding. And, and, but nevertheless, I mean, it could be coincidence. It could be coincidence. You could see over here, bang, bang, market paying attention to that, zoom in, and then another kiss right over there. I don't, I, either which way, it's not, it's not really important, but it is surely fun to look at. Uh, a lot of people get very, let's say, at this particular point, if you were to call out anything contrarian, they're not very happy about it. That happened at the top of Bitcoin as well, going back to November, December 2021. And it's it's happening again the other way. Uh, it happened at the bottom of the DXY down over here as people had, you know, very low targets of what the dollar was about to be. We're about to see the end of the dollar. So that, that happens at extremes. And, and I know that everyone right now is, is holding on to their milkshake and they're really enjoying it. And, and maybe it continues, right? But either which way, it's, it would be normal. We spoke about this yesterday. It would be quite normal to see some type of retrace and how far that retrace would go. We have a bit of support that the market's paying attention to right now at 113.50. We see that ever since the breakout on the Monday open of Asia, 
that has been held as support. Any retest of that, that would be important to see. If it breaks, we're coming down towards 112.50. And then assuming that holds, we will see if we're able to consolidate before making a next move higher. Or if that loses at that point, then obviously we are seeing a little bit of, of mean reversion taking place. And that's generally what happens in markets. Markets very seldom are hyperbolic, shooting straight up and straight down. And and we see, uh, as I look across the markets right here, we see the 10-year coming off today. And that's a nasty gap. And then it's running away, right? As you can see, the, the nasty gap. And now we're, we're running away. And again, this is when we, we saw a lot of people opening up uh, treasury accounts, looking to get into the sellings of the bond trades. And it's, it's just very, very late. Usually by the time people find something attractive that they want to or wish and have FOMO that they were in. And another beautiful example of that is, is oil this year. And you just come back into the spring, late spring over here, and just about everyone all of a sudden really was embracing these significantly higher targets on oil and, and retail and experts alike, you know, and, and then we've seen a significant decline, significant decline since. Oh, by the way, that's pretty important. We've come into that area of support over here and might be a good idea if you were interested in the oil trade at this point, getting ready to line up an entry. You know, I'm first of all, if we are going to see uh, any type of Let's say, well, I'm just going to leave it at that. We'll watch the charts. We're going to line it up. I have the breakout, the trend line breakout over there. A breakout above there. I think that warrants from a risk to reward standpoint, a good place to begin leaning in. We are not too far away from the draining of the strategic petroleum reserves. We have about another, I don't know, six weeks left or, or less. And then at that point, we're going to be working towards refilling that. Russia just floated the idea that OPEC caught a million barrels of oil a day. And we are seeing, of course, lessening worldwide demand. However, we are about to see uh, the president of China, Xi, about to be reelected. And then I assume that China reopens up. And as China reopens up, we will be seeing further demand come on the market. We're going to be seeing a lessening of a supply and then maybe even more demand by the refilling of the strategic petroleum reserve. It might be a good time to lean in. Now, of course, we're looking at things like potential global recession, potentially even global depression. I mean, those are not words to be taken lightly. The The recession one, we had a, we had a global recession in, in 2015, no? I mean... The U.S. economy kind of did pretty well throughout it. Certainly the U.S. markets did. Uh, whether or not we have any type of domestic in the U.S., domestic greater recession, that's certainly in the cards. But again, the economy continues to run pretty, pretty strong. Actually, if there's a problem out there, the problem is a lack of labor. It's very difficult for businesses to grow right now because they don't simply have any type of labor. And if you are following what's going on in your local economy, if you talk to other uh, business owners, the problem is not any type of slowdown in business. The problem is, is that they can't expand further. They are not able to find people who are willing to work. We wanted to look at yesterday. Let me jump around a little bit. Let me take a look at what's going on across. Before we do, we must check in with the equity markets just so we have a little bit of a bearings. And we're seeing, first of all, the NASDAQ not yet by a thread holding the June lows, looking for any type of... Uh, did, did you notice yesterday, though, and we were talking about the resistance we were into, and then we were talking about the resistance overhead coming from the trend line. And then finally over here at 11,800, after we got off the live, that resistance not only held, we resumed down. Uh, we've since taken out the weekly low, but we are holding the June low and, you know, by a thread, by, by a thread. Nevertheless, uh, S&P 500 did take out the June low. You could see that a lot of stops taken out. And I say that because there was no follow through, the spikes up, and it looks to be in a very similar situation as the uh, as the Nasdaq.
just really holding on to a close below by a thread. Did it close below? No, it didn't close below. It just it just wicked below. Let me look on a closing basis just so I have an idea. I would like just to know. Yeah, we got we got a close below. Right? What out? Let me go in the daily. Yeah. Is that a close below or is that just tagging it? I don't know. It's very close. It it looks like maybe a potentially slight. I don't know how imp important it is. Otherwise, I would look a little bit further. I obviously I don't think it's that important. Um, and then we're looking at, interestingly enough, again, we could look at Bitcoin and say, well, that is like similar to the NASDAQ. It's, it's barely holding those June lows and the, 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 uh, the Ethereum, <laughs> the Ethereum is definitely has a lot of space with continued higher lows, uh, off of the June low and just notable. And it will be interesting to see for myself. I hope for you, if the markets are able to put in any type of risk rally, any time now that to see whether or not we see Ethereum outperform or if we see a new shift take place where even though Ethereum is making gains against the US dollar, Bitcoin is outperforming Ethereum. Observations, things we need to watch out for. Gold here, that's a pretty big candle, gold putting in. Let's see if it's time to line up gold. And let me just see, uh, actually, I, I, don't, I don't, I'm going to take a look at that uh, on my off time over here, right? So, I mean, obviously steel in a massive, massive downtrend with the current interest rates and, and yield so high, I can't imagine gold being in favor, but that's also when you probably want to think about if you don't have a position accumulating gold. Now, a lot of people have much significantly lower price targets on where gold will end up. I honestly don't know. I'm just gonna look and follow what's going on in the charts. Look at that nice breakdown that occurred over there. Extend it out, right? There's the breakdown and, and silver's looking pretty nasty right now. Uh, so the metals are, are not really not really much today. You can hear my tone too. Is it Does it sound excited? Right, that might be a good time to look for some type of uh, resumption out and just give it time to consolidate until we see a break of that trend line on silver. I like that a lot uh, until something else a little bit better develops. You see my tone just totally changed over there. Uh, it could be because I don't spend too much time with them. Yesterday we wanted to look in and check in about the number of addresses on Bitcoin. You could see over here, number of addresses with a non-zero balance in Bitcoin continues in the bear market to grow. It's of note or it's notable that, first of all, the, the massive peak in 2017, December, you know, coming in that last quarter, September, October, November, December, where the new addresses just went parabolic and, and so did price. Then you come over here to where we call a potential structural top in Bitcoin in April 2021. Now, I, am, I I embrace them both, whether or not you want, I think you should view them from both and from ma uh, multiple vantage points, whether or not that indeed April was the structural 2021 top, or obviously price made a higher high in November 2021. I was leaning towards April up until I started doing the work on currency debasement, on the monetary base total, because monetary base total peaked out in November. So that to me pointed out to, well, it's it's hard not to say that November was all, the, the structural top. And it leaves me kind of, you know, open to either one. I think that's a good place to be anyway. Uh, but notice that not only did we not have that huge peak over here at the top in November, actually addresses were off compared to April at the peak in November. We didn't go parabolic. Now, we did have some parabolic action occurring from January through April occurring on new addresses on Bitcoin. But since then and during the bear market, these addresses continue to climb. That didn't happen after having that significant new uh, euphoria in new, new, new participants, new addresses. We went sideways for the whole bear market. You see that we went sideways for the whole bear market. This bear market, we've been growing and adoption continues in earnest. Again, that's the second most important signal on Bitcoin. For me, the first is the continued currency debasement. The second, you know, limited supply, scarce asset. And then you have uh, the, the, the second most is the network effects 
including the network growth, addresses, non-zero balance is one way to track that. Another important factor to look at over here is we look at the, the health of the network, and that is, maybe I can make this a little bit bigger so we could just take a look at it. And this is uh, percent of supply, last active, one, people that have been holding one year or longer. And what's interesting to note is that markets peak, right? Markets peak why there's distribution happening. And you could see over here the distribution happening and then markets peak. And then you see, again, those addresses begin to climb during the bear market. Look at the little capitulation and then continue to climb. And that's usually the bottom, by the way, after that, that U is put in. And then you have that little capitulation that, that is usually the bottom. That just happened over here, by the way, in June. I'm sorry, that happened in July. What happened in July? This was after the, 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 the last CPI. No, that's September. I don't know, obviously. But I do know that you see, again, the distribution happening, right? And then you see the top. This points to what? A November or an April structural top. To me, this points to an April structural top. You see the rounding bottom and then the new address is climbing up during the bear market that's happening over here. And then you see that little capitulation. Here's that little capitulation. If we do indeed begin to see price rising and we see this, this, this ratio continue to climb, that would be a bullish signal. I, I know that right now that everyone is extraordinarily bearish because of the macro and rightfully so. But we did see a little bit of a hint of potentially different behavior in central banks. If you remember coming into March when the Federal Reserve raised rates, we were first watching other central banks. We watched the Bank of Australia and we watched the Bank of England raise rates first. And that to us was a hint that the Federal Reserve was getting ready to raise rates. Here we're seeing now a central bank pivot. You know, it could be a sign and... And I just want to be able to be open to, to everything, right? That's all. Um, what else? A little bit of, of positioning. We got lots of overhead resistance, not really going anywhere yet, right? Uh, on Bitcoin. So we don't, we're not going to really look at that. And as far as Bitcoin positioning today, we're looking at, right? Hold on. Let me pull up the Bitcoin. Lots of flip-flopping. There was a long trade in the last 24 hours. There was a long trade taken on Bitcoin that was stopped out, full stop loss, uh, just over 2%. And then a new short trade initiated about eight hours later. So a lot of flip-flopping getting on the right side. And if potentially, if during this signal period here, we do see any follow through to the upside as Bitcoin is now barely green, equity markets not able to have any follow through, but Everything is significantly off its overnight lows ever since the Bank of England restarted their quantitative easing program. It's it's notable, and now and now we are seeing the DXY roll over and into the red. and And I know if if you think about it, and you and you and you say, oh well, quantitative easing, it's it's probably uh, the opposite. That's gonna if if another central bank is doing it, it's probably gonna strengthen the DXY. But I I, I don't know. You have to follow price and. Well, I guess we talked about that during the tweet. If we see any type of upward uh, follow through on Bitcoin, we will be taking a double stop loss on the Bitcoin. And Ethereum continues to be open holding and holding through just the short position now going on about 16 days, holding an open position 12% into profit. We still need a little bit of follow through before that trade would close. Looks like it would close now. Uh, very nicely into profit and the shorts still have the momentum. Not only do shorts have the momentum, we're, we're very close to obviously breaking down. If you look at what's happening, uh, not only on Bitcoin, the equity markets, they're just holding on to the, the June lows by a hair. It wouldn't take much. Boom, 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 boom. That's true, Dan. I mean, the, the, whew. Oof. The, the Jordan wearing a hat is like, if I'm going to be doing any type of video in the morning, waking up, just, br br you know, you know, rubbing my eyes with some water 
making most of all, most importantly, kiss and, kiss and pray with the kids, able to get myself an espresso and get over here and just get online with y'all. It'll have to be with a hat. There's no way I'm gonna be brushing my hair, you know? Bitcoin, Ethereum, let's take a look at the cross, right? So let me pull it up and let me zoom out, right? And I, and I, I personally see lots of consolidation taking place right here. Again, my, my own interest is to wait and watch to see if we have, um, boom, 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 sorry about that. My own personal opinion is to wait and to watch and see if we have any type of risk rally to see indeed what Ethereum's reaction over here is. And that's because now we're post-merge. Pre-merge and ever since the last bear market, you know, as Bitcoin is the rising tide that lifts all boats, Ethereum was expected to outperform and it did. And it had and including throughout the whole bear market thus far. If you look at, and I like to look at like lining up Bitcoin, I like to look at it this way. Let me do that for you at the same time. And then let me finish explaining what I wanted to, to explain. So, you know, coming back to the previous bear market, you see in the bear market, Bitcoin outperforms and you see Ethereum like sucked in. And then there's the capitulation, the kind of about even, and then on the way up, you see Ethereum outperform, right? And then on the way down, right? This is the June, this is the 4X. By the way, I just have to point it out because yesterday, uh, some, some big influencer accounts talking about this is the first cycle, Bitcoin's first tightening cycle. That is absolutely not true. 2018, 2019, we were looking at rate hikes all of 2018 as the Bitcoin came off. This is where the rate hike stopped. Quantitative e uh, tightening was still underway and continued up until September, right over here. Bitcoin during quantitative tightening did a 4X. Just of no a little bit of history, but I think that everyone should be well aware. This is Bitcoin's second tightening cycle and it was a real tightening cycle. Rate hikes and quantitative tightening underway. The system broke over here in September 2019 and the Federal Reserve needed to return to balance sheet expansion. Risk equity markets, Bitcoin was well off its lows. Bitcoin was nowhere near its high. It was 50% off its high, but equity markets were just a stone throw and had already made during this period new all-time highs. As we move forward, we see that as the bull market began, this is a big consolidation period. This is where CTM began getting a lot of people understanding what was coming and to be able to position themselves in ahead of the bull market. And then we saw as per expectation that Ethereum would outperform Bitcoin during the bull market. And that has continued. Here's the structural top, by the way. Uh, in April, we saw that Bitcoin... Uh, Ethereum peaked a month later. By the way, that was past bear market behavior. So is that something else that talks about, could you hit the like button if you didn't get a chance yet today? So go ahead and, and hit the like button. Appreciate the support for helping other people get their eyes on the content that we deliver here, which I believe is high quality content, very original and, and, and just uh, pure signal. Uh, we saw Ethereum peaking out a, uh, a month later. That was indicative of, of past tops, alt season one and alt season two of the past bear mar of past bull market. We saw that type of divergence. Uh, so that, is that pointing to an April structural top? Well, that would be another check mark. One thing different is that Ethereum kept the gap over here the whole time. Here you could see in November, both peaked at the same time. That's not really indicative or at least we don't have too much history to go off of, but in past behavior, we didn't see that happen. Is that because of the Fed's pivot in Fed policy? It was two weeks earlier, we saw the Fed say that they were gonna begin their taper in November and then work towards not only running off quantitative uh, easing over the next five months, four months, five months, November, December, Jan January, February, March over the next five months, but then go, go towards liftoff 
And then you saw again throughout the nasty part of the bear market, even what could be capitulation. I mean, it was some type of, of forced liquidations. Whether or not it was capitulation, I don't know. But you do see that the 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 space has held. So now that we're post merge, the most important thing is not for me to predict the future and what happens next. It's to see that if we have any rally, right? If we see Ethereum, uh, whether Ethereum continues to outperform to hold that gap, or if we see some, some type of different behavior and actually Bitcoin outperform. And I, I think that's the best way to view the cross, Ethereum, Bitcoin. And right now we are seeing just some sideways consolidation. Now, uh, I, I highly recommend if you go back two weeks on the channel, if you look at Ben Cowan's conversation where he talks about and it's very good, it's very passionate, and it's very clear, the distribution that is occurring over here, right? And that potentially we we're about to see uh, Bitcoin outperform Ethereum. Now, again, both of them could outperform the US dollar, but what we're looking at is to see whether or not we see Bitcoin outperform Ethereum on this cross. I highly recommend the video. Ben was absolutely on fire. It is really good. And it, the title of the video is Bitcoin Dominance, something about or Bitcoin to dominate Ethereum. So go ahead and, and watch that one uh, to get a good look and some other. Again, you want multiple vantage points. Truly, no one has the truth. When you see a lot of people coming off overly confident, you have to get concerned uh, on both sides, whether it's bullish, whether it's bearish. When you start seeing people whose view is is really coming to fruition, and then they start getting very emotional. That's also a warning sign. Be careful. It's really good to be able to read the room, to read other people. Uh, and you can see I try to do it myself. I try to be so aware of you, when I was talking about gold and silver, I could hear the uncertainty. And if you couldn't, try to pick up that in the future. It's very important. It works all different ways. Um, yeah, Apple talking about that they didn't change so as far as i understand it's from very far i mean it's across the whole neighborhood i'm not even paying attention but i don't think that they changed their previous expectations they only didn't increase them i'm i'm not so sure about that i i don't know um what are my thoughts on the on the 12 hour bull divergence on nasdaq we've seen nice pumps on previous yeah matthew i mean uh if you're looking at bullish divergence it could say that potentially uh, in the near term, that downside movement is limited. Now, price could still go sideways. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to have any type of reversal out of it. But, and it could mean that we go down further, but, it, but it, it should mean that for the moment, downside is limited. If we take a look at the NASDAQ and we just zoom out a little bit, again, to make it very easy of when we might have any type of reversal to the upside. I know you're on the 12 hour, but any type of reversal to the upside we have the same thing as yesterday and let me just highlight it and the chart work is terrible but the but not the that's resistance right above us right that's where we were watching and tracking this bottom line over here and this was a little bit of support once it broke we came in and we, and we tested as resistance and thus far we've resumed down making that lower that lower low only the june low has held at the same time, now coming back up, that's resistance. And that would, that broken support, which is now confirmed as resistance, on the way is up is resistance. Then we'll have this yellow sloping down trend line. That's also a confluence of resistance over here. Break above it, well, then there's a good chance that something could be developing. Not before, not down over here, even though you might see bu a bullish divergence developing. It's not, it's too soon to get into a trade. You got to wait for the signal and patience, the stalking, the, the, the patience of a predator is going to help you have cleaner kills, right? Now we're getting back above their expectations would be that we run into this area of resistance first. And then if you see some type of pullback, right? And then we're coming in for the retest. That's going to be an important one to see whether or not we hold break back above that could be a good and clean entry. And then there's some space over here. They got a little bit of resistance here where you could tidy up your trade if you get to it. Uh, and then hopefully and potentially even targeting that high. 
that would be if we saw any type of, of, of risk rally develop, right? That is watching the other side. Right now, we're looking at momentum clearly and strongly to the downside, and we just have to give it some time. So that's that's that best look at that. That no, you know, everyone enjoys working from home, huh? It's it's difficult to find people. Great, Jan, great morning. Love love the stars and the hearts. That's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Ah, uh, Dean, when I I was I'm, I'm working backwards now, just kind of made you know. We started off with a, a really good, strong session. And, and and for me, if you ask me whether or not I want to do the live streams or the uploads, I, I love doing the live streams. I really do. I love the energy. There's no question about it. Uh, Dean, I, I'm talking about unskilled labor. I'm talking about minimum wage, unskilled labor, you know, someone taking orders at a pizza restaurant, someone delivering pizzas, things like that, un, unskilled labor. Uh, that's, that's specifically what I was referring to. Boom, 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 boom. No, I never changed my opinion about the dollar milkshake theory. I just want to clarify that and make sure that we understand that I, I was, by the way, if, if you remember, and, and it is all on, on, on tape, it's on the channel. I was a dollar bull all through 2019 when we started on the channel, October, 2019, and then coming into this area, I was watching equities rise. I was watching gold rise and I was also watching Bitcoin rise and the dollar rise. And I was a dollar bull. And I was such a dollar bull that during this sell-off over here, I kept everyone on the long dollar trade. This is, if you go back and you watch 2020 on the channel, and if you're watching what's happening over here, the first week of March, I was uh, such a dollar milkshake theory. Uh, I understanding that was what was taking place that I kept everyone long the dollar and then that's dollar milkshake theory like you could pull up and and we should for one second just to point it out and and to talk about it because I think it's relevant and it's so, so important in that same area over there in March 2020 a little bit longer George a little you could see the the dollar milkshake theory this is the peso going in one month from from 18 and a half 19 to 25 dollar milkshake theory in and by the way if you look at the the US dollar Mexican peso today wait what's going on the the Mexican peso in 2022 has outperformed the the US dollar what wait that doesn't align with the dollar milkshake theory no, of course it doesn't, because the Mexican, the Bank of Mexico has interest rates higher, and Mexico is not an energy defunct. They have their own, they have their own energy supply, right? What you're seeing taking place across the markets right now is that countries that are energy deficient are getting obliterated. It's not a shortage of dollars that you're seeing take place, which is dollar milkshake theory. So I think there's a little bit of blurred lines when we talk about dollar milkshake theory. When we were seeing a shortage of dollars take place in 2020, dollar milkshake theory, right, compared to what's happening right now, which is a lot more uh, a focus on energy defunct countries. Now, we are seeing a massive divergence in monetary policy from central banks like the Federal Reserve and the ECB. That's causing a massive inflows into dollars versus euros. We are seeing a massive divergence in central bank policy between the Bank of Japan and the Federal Reserve. We're not seeing a divergence in policy between the Bank of Mexico and the Federal Reserve. Bank of Mexico has been raising rates and have rates higher than the, than the Federal Reserve. So I, a big believer in the dollar milkshake theory, but that's not what we're seeing right now. Now, people will just point to the DXY which is 57% weighted towards the euro, and then the next highly weighted towards the Bank of Japan, and so that's the dollar milkshake theory. I don't know about that. Uh, honestly, I don't, I don't know about that. So th those are my views on that. I, I, I think they're relevant and they're important, and, and the Ape Show, I think that there, there's a lot of nuance to it all. That's all. Oh, that wasn't, that wasn't, that was roll with it. 
sorry about that, the ape show. That was roll with it and, and just want to clarify on that. So one thing about the dollar milkshake theory, boom, 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 is that Bitcoin would become a straw in it because they have to print infinite amounts uh, to suppress Bitcoin in the future markets. And then you also have to wonder, for those of you that embrace dollar milkshake theory, and I'm obviously uh, open to it as so much as that I try to understand it, although be from afar, it was in 2019, 2020 that I really uh, studied it. But dollar milkshake theory it suggests or theorizes that at the time that you see that strong dollar, there will come a point in time where you see the U.S. equity markets rising in unison with the, with the dollar. And that's because you don't want to hold foreign currency. It's being devalued rapidly. So you need to place that into the U.S. It goes into the U.S. public markets. And you see, along with the strong dollar, strong equity markets rising. You have to wonder, does that strong correlation between U.S. equity markets and Bitcoin hold? And does that drag and pull Bitcoin with it? Or is it because you're seeing people seeing their their domestic currency devalues? Maybe for whatever reason, they don't want to hold dollars and maybe they prefer to hold Bitcoin. Maybe they're sick of the the shenanigans that go on with the debasement, not only of their own currency, but of the U.S. dollar. They're attracted to a scarce asset with fixed supply, or maybe they don't trust the banks anymore and they want to be responsible and hold their own coin. I don't know. It could be all of those things. So I just I just enjoy being here and talking about markets with all of you. That's all. All right, everyone. Ace, we looked at it. And I think you should go back and look at it only because when I looked at silver, I was very indecisive. I feel like I'm on the wrong chart. So I'm going to jump over here, Ace. And when I looked at silver, I was I was very undecisive. I wish... I wish that we had some type of machine learning bot that was able, as we're going over this, to be able to to title the different sections. That I I can't do that. I mean, I'm talking about you whether or not we should do the live streams or just do smaller uploads. I don't have the time to to do the subtitles. If I if I could, I would. I know it would be helpful for others out there. And I suppose if you're watching this on the replay, you could do that and add that in the comments. That would be helpful for the rest of of the community. But silver, if you go back and you look, Ace, if you take the, the mouse and you go over the stream and you go back to where we're talking about gold and silver, there's a lot of uncertainty on my part. And at this point, I put in this line over here. And this line is a very clear line in the sand about when potentially silver could be become interesting. And right now, I think giving it time to consolidate, uh, it might even be lining up a move to the, to the downside. I, I feel bad uh, in so much as this. Ace, let's take a look at it. Let's review this really quick. So number one, I feel bad in this, right? So remember, this is where on this trend line break, we pointed out we would be watching silver. Price came into the resistance, was rejected, and then broke through right over here. We had the pullback. We were watching this on a Friday. We said a resumption over here would offer a long opportunity on silver. And that trade triggered and it triggered beautifully. Then as price came down, uh, started coming down over here. We talked about ahead of time, moving your stop loss over to there. And then that stop loss taken out. So that's that's a perfect trade. That's a great trade. You don't have to stop. I mean, just great trade management. Now, what happened after that, though, is you could see on this area over here, it could have been very easy to have this trend line drawn in. We had two touches already. And we could see or should have seen uh, and had that trend line in. And then when price was rejected over here, and we're in a strong downtrend. What we did over here was counter trend. And we talked about it being counter trend as it happened. But silver's in a strong move down. And this is a resistance in a downtrend. And then I think lining it up like this, this could have provided a really good entry. And that would keep you right now in, in an open trade. You could have by now after this move, moved your stop loss, just, you know, not locking any type of profit, but, you know, not break even. And then just giving this room to see if it's able to dump down further. That's a position of strength. Looking to line this up now, I, I feel like I'd be chasing momentum and, and I don't want to do it. 
So that's, that's my view of silver. So everyone, thanks for being here this morning. Thanks for, for putting in the time, putting in the work. I know for some people it's a, it's a lot, uh, to put in 45 minutes going over the general markets, another 45 minutes, CTM 2.0 only. I have to do it. I have to do it because it's, it's, it's what provides the edge. And sometimes, even if you're watching this on the replay, you could, you could maybe watch this a little bit faster at 1.2, uh, 1.25 X or, or whatever speed is comfortable for you. But the thing about the markets is that it takes work and it takes the time putting in the work in to stay sharp. They're very complicated. They're very, these are unprecedented times. By the way, I cannot have at this particular point in time a deterministic opinion about everything. How could I? And you could see today or you saw today how quickly things changed. We saw a central bank that was embracing tightening pivot to back to quantitative easing. It really, really is where it is. Yeah, we got to get some head snack up in here soon. We'll get to it. We, you know, when I was young, I used to, I used to, um, you know, move quick and break things. Now I'm much more deliberate, but we'll get head back into this. All right, everyone. Energy rich countries versus poor ones and countries that run printing presses hot with deficits in entry and food production is pretty much Putin's senior year. Look, I'm just going to throw it out there. It's a bit controversial. It truly is. You may, may or may not like it, but whatever. I, I like to be provoking. Speaking of provoking, you know, was this was this was this Putin moving the chessboard or was this Putin responding to the chessboard? Did maybe perhaps the elites that be call him Davos, call him Charles Swap, call him Charles Schwab and the World Economic Forum? Is this what they wanted and was Putin a pawn in their game? I don't know. You have to think about it. You have to consult all sides. It's entirely possible. Everyone, thank you for the day. Boom, 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 boom. Thanks, Dave. I, I, Dave, I was thinking of you this morning, thinking about Foss when you met him. Uh, lots of love. Dave, Brian, everyone, thanks for being here. <laughs> I have to, Ace, I just have to put it out there. I don't mean to be overly controversial, but it's, it's look, it's how we improve our overall critical thinking abilities. You know, everyone, lots of love. I'll see you all tomorrow. God bless you. Heads up again, Friday. We have no public live stream traveling back home to Mexico. God bless you. I'll talk to you soon. By the way, I'm sorry. I'm not even sorry. With all earnest, please, on a mobile device, if you enjoyed today's session, you're leaving now on your way out, please take a second, hit the like like button. If you are on the replay crew and you enjoyed this session, leave a comment, leave a thoughtful comment, leave a two sentence comment about something that you appreciated the discussion taking place today, or maybe thought something new and or had a different perspective of something I shared. Maybe you are, really feel that the dollar milkshake is taking place and that the, the opinions or thoughts that I added were not really so much in play. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Stay humble. Stay humble and stack sats. No question about it. Everyone, I'll talk to you later.